What's up guys, Quezzy or Noah here bringing you guys another tutorial and today we're back in Design Hill and this time we're going to be covering Instagram posts. So you might have seen a few of my other Design Hill Studio tutorials um, and I've covered a few things. We've covered Instagram stories, Facebook covers, uh, but now we're going to be covering Instagram posts. If you guys aren't familiar with Design Hill, it's this free tool for creating graphics. Um, and it's very customizable. They have templates for you to use if you're not good at creating. Um, but I'm going to show you how to go about creating something from scratch yourself. So if you go to designhill.com slash studio, um, you'll get this screen and you can go to try it for free. And you'll get something like this. Um, you might have to sign in or sign up. Um, be sure to do that. And it's absolutely free and you have your dashboard and you'll be able to save your uh, creations here Which is very nice. So you always have them in this video We're gonna be creating something from scratch here with the Instagram post But you can see they have templates for just about everything and you can even use custom dimensions uh, But let's go ahead and click Instagram posts and go ahead and create something so here we are We got a blank canvas and you'll notice there's a bunch of templates here so if you guys aren't good at creating or you see a template that you like and are inspired by, you can use one of these um, as the base for your Instagram post. I'm going to be creating mine from scratch and I actually loaded in a few assets already. And we're going to be creating an Instagram post I made for my mock-up template website, Template FC, which was for this December bundle pack. Um, so we're going to be recreating this kind of, in, uh, kind of in its own way for Design Hill because some of the things are a little different in Design Hill as opposed to Photoshop where that was created originally. Um, you'll notice I have a few Christmas elements in here so you can just find these uh, on the internet or some various uh, graphic websites. Uh, so you can load them in but also Design Hill has some already loaded in elements. So the elements tab are just some basic shapes but if you go to icons there's a lot more. Um, you think of icons as just icons, but they have a lot of little like clip art -y images and stuff like that. Uh, so be sure to search this first before you go online. Uh, but the upload tab will allow you to upload your own images, which is what I did here. And you'll see some images from my previous Design Hill videos. And I just want to give a huge shout out to Design Hill for sponsoring this video. I love covering their stuff. It's a lot of fun and it's a very unique tool. Design Hill Studio is actually a really great tool because it's free to use and anyone can use it. The templates are really nice and the loaded in text um, options are really great. You can easily edit these. So it's really awesome for beginning designers or people who don't design at all. Or if you just don't have access to Photoshop or any paid for software, it's a great alternative. Anyways, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to click on my background first and I'm going to go to color. Now I use a light blue background for my template FC posts and it's actually a blue that is hashtag 009CFF. So I'm just going to put that code in there. I have it copied, so I'll just paste it in. And now my background's blue. Uh, we also have this branding thing where we include uh, this grid in the background of most of our products. So I'm going to add this in. And you'll notice you get a few options when you add an image. Uh, first of all, you just have to click your image and it'll open up in the middle of the document. Uh, the outer anchors or the corner ankle anchors uh, scale. But you can use these side ones to fit the image to what size you want. So obviously I wanted to go end to end and I actually want this rotated because it's better. It's centered a little better this way. Um, and you can see the top and bottom are aligned and then I can just drag this one to the left, this one to the right. And that scales it for me and it fits the image in. Now if I wanted to scale it up or down I could use the corner and that's pretty easy but I like it exactly like that. Now I'm going to add in the images I am promoting. So I'm promoting these four products as they are in a bundle. So I'm going to go ahead and add these here. And this one's going to go to the bottom left. This one's going to be bottom right. This one's going to be top right. And then this one's going to be um, top left. And I'm going to scale these in until they go, um, they click into the middle. So actually let me move this down and scale this and what I mean by that is if I take this and align it to the left edge you'll see a pink line down that left edge and actually if I zoom in a little bit down here with this percentage is where you can zoom in by the way um, let me just show you that again it aligns it to the left there and then if we grab if we grab the anchor point and move this 
down, we should get a pink arrow for the middle, which is right there. And that's the size I want all these to be. So let's scale back out. I'm going to go to fit. And let's scale this one down too. Make sure the edge is aligned. Scale it down till we get the middle pink. There we go. And then let's do the same thing for these on the right. Perfect. Now I want to align these um, how I want them. So they're going to be a little staggered and more towards the bottom. So these two are going to be touching. This one is going to be close to touching that corner. And then this one's going to be down. And I actually want them a little lower. Cool. So that is sort of the look I am going for with these. And before I add all the design elements, like the Christmas elements and everything, I want to add in my text so I have my text placement and all the information I want in text on my image. So then I can add the other stuff around it. So let's go to the text options. And you'll notice there's a bunch of text templates here that you can add in and edit. Um, so if you find one of those that you like, feel free to add it in and change it. You might have to ungroup it before you can edit, so keep that in mind. But I want to go ahead and create my own text. So I'm just going to go to add a heading. And the top text, I want it to say December bundle pack. And I'm holding shift there, so it's all caps. And I'm going to extend this right arm out and then bring this to the top. And I'm going to just bring this in so it's about the size of our text cool. And then I'm going to use the scale tool to scale it up. You could increase the font size, but something in Photoshop I always do is just scale it up. And I think it's easier. So that's what I'm going to do here and align it till it is centered. And I believe that is centered. Um, let's select the text by triple clicking and go to our fonts. And I actually kind of like the open sans font. Um, I don't know what it looks like, bold or italic. Um, let's actually, I wonder if there is a bold version of this. So you can see if you go to fonts, you can search for fonts and there is. So I'm going to go and get open sans bold here and I already have it italicized. Uh, so that is the font I'm going for. You can see there is a bunch of fonts though. I guess you have to search for them though. If you don't, um, you don't have that many options because it says all fonts, but you scroll, you can see it's just a few A's. So I don't know if that's just my thing being a little weird, but um, if you can search for fonts, maybe Google some fonts you like um, or use the text that's already or the text templates that are already here. Um, I'm pretty good with knowing font names that I like, so I can usually search for them. But with this text selected, I want um, this text to be like a goldish yellow. Maybe we just go yellow um, and then I'm going to click off. Yeah, so that's pretty good. Now, one thing that I want is some contrast with the text. I want some darkness behind it so it pops a little more. Since our background is kind of light and the white lines across the, or the white grid um, kind of mixes in with the lighter text. So you'll notice on the original in Photoshop, it has a stroke around it, a black stroke. Um, and you can't actually do strokes in Design Hill. Um, it's one of the downsides of it being a pretty early um, beta doesn't have every design element, but you can get around it by doing this little trick. So let's select our text, go to copy, go back to our color and get black. Now let's bring this up and we're going to make this a drop shadow. So let's get it kind of close. I don't want it exactly on it. I want it. Yeah. Okay. Somewhere there. I'm going to move it slightly to the left, slightly up. So it's something like this. Um, now we want the yellow on top. So if we go to position and backward, you can see it goes behind and now it's a little more apparent. It stands out. It pops a little more. And that's what we want. You can see that's pretty simple. You could even duplicate that black one and put it at the top right. So it's more like a stroke. But right now this is like a drop shadow and this works fine for me. Uh, select our text then and we're going to copy it so we can add it in a few more places. So go to copy. Let's uh, triple click this. I'm going to go to the italicize button and undo it. And this is where I'm going to put my price, which is $50. 
Uh, let's select this and we're going to make this text white now. And let's bring the box down so it's a little smaller and this will go right below here. Now I don't want it to be that big so I'm going to scale it down again. Maybe something like that. And let's align it left with this original um, December bundle pack text. And we're going to do the same trick we just did with the um, other text. We're going to make that drop shadow. So let's go to copy, color, black, move it right below, position backward. And I'm using the arrow keys to adjust position here. And I think that is pretty good. Cool. So let's select that again and copy it one more time. And this is where I'm going to put the other price, which is like um, the original price all these products would be, but it's discounted, so it's a little less. Um, so let's go 83.85 is the original price if all these products were sold individually. Um, and let's put that here. We're going to make this a little smaller. In it um yeah we'll put it like right next to it here and i actually want this opacity to be slightly down so if we go to this button here the um, grid and bump this down to about 78 works somewhere in the 70s is what i was doing um, and maybe we make it even smaller cool um so we're gonna put that there maybe have it a little closer so it's a little more legible with the again the grid i don't want the drop shadow on this one though i just want it to be a little fainter and let's go to our icons and find some cool element uh to strike through it so i want some sort of line or something like that um scroll through here there's a bunch i could choose from you'll notice if you keep scrolling there's just a ton of options but i just want a simple line so i'm going to use this guy here and you can see when you click it it will just pop up on screen let's select the color and i want a really bright red cool um, now we gotta scale this down so let's go to the corners here scale it down we'll move it over you can see it's still way too big Um, let's zoom in here again, uh, maybe 125, cool. And I'm going to increase it slightly and then just give it a slight rotation. So there's the strike through, cool, that's exactly what I want. And let's bump down that opacity as well. So you can still read the price or the original price. And I think that's pretty good. Uh, maybe I could lower the opacity or mess with the opacities of both of those. Also the positioning could be better with the grid. but uh, I think we're all right. Let's go back to our fit and get everything in here. Very nice. Uh, let's go to the 50 text, select that and copy that. Um, you could really duplicate any of these. It doesn't really matter, but um, we're going to take that down and let's extend it to the left a little bit and then extend it to the right pretty far. This will be adjusted um, eventually. So it's whatever we do here doesn't really matter, but we just want to get our text in here. So let's select this and uh, I'm going to type out what comes in this pack. So this is going to be a little bit of typing. And I'm actually going to select it and bump down the size. That should work. And let me extend the box actually to about there. Okay. Continue typing. Okay, um, let's adjust this so we get it on two lines and perfect. We'll have it down here. I'm actually gonna go up here to the alignment and go to left align. And I'm actually gonna make the color black because we're gonna be adding some white elements down here and black will be the better contrast. Um, so let me actually make this a bit smaller and that should be good. Cool, so that is all the text I want. And I want to add one more element, which is the logo of our company. And this is just going to go into the bottom left corner. Like that. And then we can align the text with that. So there we go. I'm pretty happy with this. Um, so now we got our layout done. Everything's looking good. 
Um, there is one last text thing I want to add, which is just some text at the top, which is our website. So I'll speed through that real fast. Um, now we can go ahead and start adding our Christmas elements or our design elements in here. Now your design elements could be anything you want. Obviously I'm going with the Christmas theme here, so all mine are Christmas related. Um, so the first thing I added in here uh, was some snow. So you can't see it because it's white and very thin here, but if I click this, you'll see we get this snow added. So this is going to be at the bottom because obviously that's where snow would occur. Um, or uh, lay and I'm gonna drag that down and rotate it a little bit um, just so it's not too even and then let's go up to copy rotate that the other way slightly bring this down and overlap it a bit uh, maybe we drag both of these down so they're a little smaller okay that's pretty good uh, now obviously we want the text in front of it so we could go to the snow and go position backward backward until it's behind uh, and do the same thing. You could also go to the text and logo and do the same thing, but go to the front. Really doesn't matter, but we'll go backward on this snow. There we go, perfect. Um, and maybe we move this over actually a bit. All right, cool. Um, I think it looks a little better higher up like that, so we'll, we'll stay with this. Um, now I have some snowflake elements. I'm going to click and add those and let's increase the size of them so they fill up everywhere and maybe drag them around, find some good spots for them. Um, we'll do something like that. Uh, so none of these are covering anything too important. They cover the website URL a little bit and some of the text down here, but again, we can do position backward, backward, backward. Um, and then I'll leave them on top of the images here and go to opacity and let's just go ahead and lower the opacity a little bit since the snowflakes don't have to stand out too much. They work pretty subtle so I'll go 58% there. I'm happy with that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add the tree now and we'll make this small and kind of out of the way in the bottom right corner. Let's go to the rotate tool, rotate it a little bit. Make it a bit smaller and okay, angle's a little too much on that. Let's set it up. Uh, I think that's pretty good. And again, we're cutting off our text. So let's go to position backward, backward, backward. Okay, and you'll notice the black text on top of that tree doesn't look the best. So we could come to that text and make it smaller or we could bring this one in and just have it go to another line. I personally like it on two lines, so I'm going to go ahead and make it smaller. And maybe we could just have it in the white here. I don't know. Feel free to adjust the text, though, to fit your design. It's up to you. I originally had it just in the bottom like so, something like this. So it's up to you guys how you do it. Uh, feel free to mess around with your or original design as much as you need. Uh, and finally, we get the cool part that finishes this off, and that's the lights. So let's click and add those. And we'll start in the top left. I'm going to rotate it slightly and maybe actually make the size a little smaller. Um, let's not cut off any in text too much, so we'll do that. Copy, rotate the other way. That's a little too much rotation. Let's do something like that. Um, copy again. We'll go to the left side. Copy one last time, rotate it the other way. Um, you can hold shift while rotating too to get perfect rotations. Um, I'm just kind of free rotating this because it doesn't have to be perfect. And there's the one on the right. Let's actually move the one on the left up a bit. And cool, and there is my Instagram post. You can see very easy to use this Design Hill um, editor. So after you finish that, you can go up to the name here. Right now it's untitled and you can name it whatever you'd like. So I could call this December bundle. And then you wanna go to save and save. 
and that will save it to your um, studio here or your, or your studio dashboard. Now I'm not going to save it because it takes a little bit of time sometimes um, and I want to show you the next thing which is downloading it which is the most important. Um, so you want to go to download and it really doesn't matter what type you choose. Um, I think JPEGs typically are smaller for something like this and PNGs you might want to only use if you're using the transparent background. Um, so do one of those PNG or JPEG. PDF you kind of don't need to do for the uh, an Instagram post. The PNG is probably higher quality like I said, um, or I guess I said file size, but the file size means uh, higher quality. So the PNG is probably higher quality, but for something like this, a JPEG would probably work. Um, so choose whatever works best for you. Go to PNG size, you want at one because this is the Instagram size. If you go any bigger, it's a little overkill. Um, and then you just want to go to download and it will prepare your download and download it to your computer. After that, you can send it to your phone or wherever, uh, airdrop it to yourself and upload it to Instagram. And it's easy as that. And if you save it to your dashboard here, you can come back and edit it later. So maybe you have a lot of posts that are in a similar layout. You can always go back and edit it to fit your next post, which is really nice. But I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you learned something. Uh, be sure to go ahead and check out Design Hill, uh, designhill.com slash studio. Thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at Quezzy. Follow my Instagram, that's Quezzy. Check out my Patreon and support me there if you enjoy my tutorials and you get some good stuff when you sign up. There's like a three years worth of stuff posted there that you can just download and use and learn from. Um, it's really nice. Hopefully this download finishes up soon. Uh, but thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.